Hello, my name is Adriana Robinson, and I am an attorney with Grossman, Young & Hammond. Today is May 9th, 2020, and we're going to talk about some frequently asked questions regarding the presidential proclamation suspending entry of immigrants who present risk to the U.S. labor market during the economic recovery following the COVID-19 outbreak. The proclamation, as you may recall, was issued on April 22nd, 2020. First question is, does the proclamation include those seeking to enter the U.S. on a non-immigrant visa? No, the proclamation does not restrict non-immigrant visas, including those for work, travel, or leisure. I have a newly approved H-1B petition, but have not yet had the consular visa appointment. Is it possible additional ste steps will be required before the visa can be issued? Section 6 of the proclamation indicates that additional measures will be evaluated consistent with the stated objective of prioritizing the hiring of U.S. workers. It is uncertain as to what additional measures will entail, but they do not take effect under this proclamation. Does the proclamation preclude individuals from applying for asylum? No. Individuals can still apply for asylum or refugee status consistent with U.S. law and conventions. If an individual is in possession of an immigrant visa that she received following an interview at a U.S. consulate but was unable to travel back to the U.S. due to travel restrictions, is she now prohibited from entering the U.S.? No. The proclamation specifically exempts persons in possession of an immigrant visa that was valid on the effective date, April 23rd, 2020. Can a person in possession of an immigrant visa that expired before April 23rd, 2020, obtain a visa foil and present it in order to enter the U.S.? No. Those persons not in possession of a valid immigrant visa or other travel document on April 23rd, 2020, are barred from entering the U.S. for the duration of the proclamation. Will immigrant visas issued but not used before April 23rd, 2020 be revoked? While the proclamation does not specifically provide for the revocation of unused immigrant visas, the State Department shared an update on its website specifically noting that no valid visas will be revoked under the proclamation. Can an applicant for adjustment of status who was temporarily absent from the U.S. on April 23rd, 2020, while in possession of an advanced parole travel document, return to the U.S.? Yes. The proclamation does not apply to persons in possession of an advanced parole document, a transportation letter, or a boarding foil that was valid on the effective date, April 23rd, 2020, or is issued on any date thereafter. Who is responsible for making a determination concerning whether an individual is exempt from this proclamation? Per Section 3 of the proclamation, consular officers are delegated discretionary authority to determine whether an immigrant is eligible for an exemption provided by the proclamation. Is there an appeal mechanism available to address denials where a consular officer's determination appears to be in error? At this time, it does not appear that there is an appeal mechanism. Section 3 of the proclamation indicates that visa issuance decisions are made within the consular officer's discretion and that the Secretary of State, in, cons in consultation with the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, will implement procedures at their discretion to further the objective of the proclamation. The proclamation appears to prohibit immigrants from entering the United States. Can persons who already have lawful permanent resident status return to the U.S. following travel abroad? Yes, the proclamation specifically exempts resident aliens. Can the spouse and child of a permanent resident seeking to accompany or follow to join him or her enter the U.S. with an immigrant visa? Maybe. The answer here depends on whether the visa was issued prior to the effective date of April 23, 2020. Spouses and children of lawful permanent residents are not currently exempt from the proclamation. As such, if the immigrant visa was issued to the spouse or child of a permanent resident alien after the effective date, their entry would be barred while the proclamation is in effect. Relatives of a U.S. citizen enter the U.S. with an immigrant visa issued after April 23, 2020. Certain immediate relatives of a U.S. citizen are exempt from the suspension of entry into the U.S. 
The proclamation specifically exempts the spouse and children under the age of 21 of a U.S. citizen. However, the parents of a U.S. citizen are not exempted by the proclamation. Can the spouse and children of a member of the U.S. Armed Forces enter the U.S. with an immigrant visa issued after April 23, 2020, regardless of whether the service member is a U.S. citizen? Yes, the proclamation specifically exempts the spouse and children of members of the U.S. Armed Forces. Does the proclamation preclude the filing of an I-130 petition or I-140 petition with USCIS for an individual outside of the country? No. For now, the proclamation only suspends the individuals coming into the United States as immigrants for 60 days. It should not preclude filing and adjudication of an I-130, which is a petition for alien relative, or an I-140, which is an immigrant petition for alien workers. Is it possible to file an application for naturalization as a U.S. citizen while the proclamation is in effect? Yes, the proclamation imposes no limitation on the ability of a qualified resident aliens seeking U.S. citizenship to file Form N-400, which is an application for naturalization. At present, however, USCIS field offices are closed and are not conducting naturalization interviews, at least until June 4th, 2020. That is it for today. Thank you for your time, and please stay tuned for more immigration updates. Thank you.